How long does it take to make a video game? The answer is, it depends on a large number of different factors, such as the genre, the budget, the size of the team, the complexity of the game, whether it's an original game or an imitation, and a bunch of other factors that you probably wouldn't have considered. It's not an exact science. You can't really create a formula that tells you exactly how long a game should be in development for, because each game has a different set of circumstances. Here's a list of indie games and how long they were in development for. You'll notice that development time directly corresponds to the complexity of the game. Short, story-focused games with simple artwork, simple gameplay, and a heavy emphasis on characters and dialogue are developed faster than long games with detailed artwork and complex gameplay. You might be surprised to hear that it can take five years to develop a video game. That's because games are usually announced a few years after they have been in development. Nintendo began developing Breath of the Wild in 2012. They didn't announce the project until 2014. They didn't show us any gameplay until 2016, and we didn't get to play it until 2017. God of War was in development since 2013, but it wasn't announced until 2016, and we didn't get to play it until 2018. Kingdom Hearts 3 was first announced back in 2013, and we're not going to get it until later this year, in 2018. So we've established that the more complex a game is, the longer it's going to take to develop it. Small teams usually stick to simple games. When a small team tries to make a large, ambitious game, the development can really stretch out for a long time. Do you see where I'm going with this? Yandere Simulator is almost as complex as a Hitman game combined with a Persona game. It's a stealth assassination game, but it's also a school simulation game. It's a very ambitious and complex project with dozens of different features, most of which affect one another. For example, when a student sees you doing something bad, the outcome is determined by your current reputation, your current persona, whether or not you are armed, bloody, or insane, whether or not you are seductive, the persona of the student witnessing you, the current atmosphere at school, whether or not the student observing you is your friend, and whether or not it's their first time witnessing your behavior. And that's just one aspect of the game. Yandere Simulator has much more complexity than the average game that is created by one man or a small team. It's actually kind of ridiculous. Even though I am committed to finishing the game, I would never suggest that a small team ever attempts to build something like this, because the time investment required is an enormous price to pay. In most cases, the speed of a game's development is only going to be determined by the factors that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. However, there are also other circumstances that can cause a game's development to slow down. First, as the complexity of a project increases, it will become proportionally difficult to work on it. Every time you add a new feature, it will affect other features, create new bugs, increase the amount of time you need to spend waiting for the code to compile, increase the loading times of the game, etc. Something that was simple and easy to work on at the beginning can eventually become a nightmare that you are constantly wrestling with, where making even the smallest amount of progress becomes very time-consuming and difficult. If you push yourself to work as many hours as humanly possible every single day, then eventually you're going to burn yourself out, you'll become too exhausted and fatigued to be productive. If you work on the same project for multiple years, you'll eventually get tired of it. This will lead to a loss of enthusiasm and motivation, which will cause you to become more easily distracted and less productive. If a group of weird people on the internet decide that they feel completely justified in treating you like garbage, and you're subjected to abusive treatment on a daily basis for multiple years, you'll become depressed, which will affect your productivity, which will cause people to call you lazy or a scam artist, which will cause you to receive even more abuse, 
which will cause you to become even more depressed and less productive, which becomes a never-ending cycle of abuse and depression. Your fan base won't know about this for a long time because you'll do your best to never speak of it. Eventually, your comment sections will be dominated by people who want to hurl insults at you and spew ridiculous misinformation that isn't anywhere close to being true. Maybe a handful of people will behave with dignity and respect, but an overwhelming number of people will be cruel and abusive. You'll decide that thousands of angry, screaming voices is the absolute last thing that would help your mental health, and you'll shut it all off so that you don't lose even more motivation or become even more depressed than you already are. Even if you're 100% dedicated to the game that you're developing, and you've sacrificed everything else in your life so that you can focus exclusively on your game, there are still a bunch of factors that can result in slow progress. In 2016, I tried to estimate what might be a reasonable release date for Yandere Simulator. Using the information that was available to me at the time, I decided that 2019 sounded like a realistic target to hit. In the two years that have passed since then, I've gained much more knowledge, experience, and information that has helped me to form a new estimate for when I think the game will be completed. And that estimate is... When it's ready. When CD Projekt Red first announced Cyberpunk 2077, they didn't bother giving the game a release date. Why would they? People would just get mad at them if they missed the date or had to delay the game. It was smart of them to avoid giving the game a release date. That's what I'm going to do too. Yandere Simulator will come out when it's finished, and not a moment sooner. I know that it can be difficult to wait for a game that you're eagerly anticipating, but if you're going to be a gamer, you've got to get used to it. I've been playing games for over two decades, and I've been in this situation countless times. Waiting for a game with a long development cycle is something I've become accustomed to. I didn't like waiting seven years for The Last Guardian, but I waited anyway, and I had a great time with the final game. In 2014, I saw a game called The Forest. It looked really cool. Even though it was still in development, I decided to download it and play it. I was having a ton of fun, so I uninstalled it immediately. I didn't want to get tired of the game before its final release. Recently, after five years in development, it was finally finished. I reinstalled it, and I had a fantastic time with it. I'm glad I didn't play it to death while it was still in early access, or else I wouldn't have been interested in playing the final game. I always end my videos by saying thank you for following the development of Yandere Simulator. But if you're looking forward to Yandere Sim, maybe the smartest thing to do is to completely ignore it until it comes out. That way you won't get tired of it before it's released, and you'll be pleasantly surprised by everything you see in the final game. I hope that this video has helped you to understand two very important things. If you're waiting for a small team to finish a large, complex, ambitious game project, you're going to have to wait longer than you would for a normal game. And even if someone is 100% dedicated to their project, there can still be a bunch of factors that result in slow progress. Thank you for following the development of Yandere Simulator. Or not. That's fine, too.